Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com, and today we're going to do a little bit of dungeon diving, beginner's guide for stamina DPS, and I'm playing the Spectre Nightblade Stam Melee. We are in veteran Black Drake Villa, and I'm just going to do walkthrough, me talking, narrating kind of what my thought process is, how I play this Stam DPS in actual live combat. This won't probably be a perfect run. We're probably going to die, do the hard modes, and screw around and figure this out together, but it's going to give you a real-life example of what you might experience with this build. Here is just a quick chart on the gear that I'm running for this build. Soulzons, Harpooners, and Briarheart. So, come first couple basic things when you're pulling is pre-buff. So, cast things that don't require a target out of combat that you can. It's like one, two on my front. So, you basically cast three, almost four abilities before you even get in the fight. That way, when you start the fight off, you're in a lot better shape. You don't have to spend... The first three or four seconds casting global cooldowns, you can spin them up. So that's kind of what we're going to get in the habit of doing. Leeching on our back bar, Deadly Cloak if we want. And we're going to see that Salamander. That Salamander in Black Drake Villa, that's going to kind of foreshadow what the big mechanics are. You want to try to separate that if you can. It's not always possible um, separating the Salamander for the main trash packs. But it's kind of what you want to focus on. So Rod's doing a good job here grabbing those. I'm going to put this down, and I don't have to save an ultimate for a boss round, so I'm just going to go ahead and use it. Deadly Cloak up, and big AoEs. And you're going to hear that sound from the Minotaur. And something I've learned a little bit after coming back to the game is the audio cues along with the subtext will really help you out mechanically in knowing when certain effects happen. So it's going to kind of foreshadow a really important bash mechanic that's going to be into play uh, this next round. So, meaning, something I didn't pay attention to is the sounds of the game previously, uh, but it really foreshadows and gives you a good indication of, oh, not just visually, because your head's not always going to be on a swivel, you're not going to be able to pay attention to all that, but that will really help you out in this next phase of the fight with bashing. Your tank on here, it's not just the tank's responsibility to bash, and I keep saying that. It's Even especially if you're in stam and you're in melee constantly, you need to throw out a bash here and there. It's a little bit of damage. Yes, it'll lower your DPS, but it's better than dying. What will kill you as your group um, and helping out your tank is just the bashes that you can't avoid. And if you got to hit them, do it as a DPS. You need to know the mechanics too, not just the tank. How you can do this is pull basically one Salamander at a time. If you're not going for like the speed runs, it makes it a lot easier because if they get together that big, huge Encratus, um flame wave is going to do a lot of damage. So you kind of just pull one at a time, kill it, and then go back to the middle. So don't pull if you're obviously like me, but I've done this so many times. <laughs> I ran this dungeon a bit of time, so same thing here. Um, you can save ultimate, though I'm going to go ahead and use mine because I get it back pretty quickly. So one ground effect, two. I'm going to wait for barb trap to proc, get that crit damage going, and then just start spinning. Light attack in between the spins. I still want to proc that, that uh, five stacks of grim focus, okay? Okay, so we'll kind of go in here, turn the hard mode on, I'll explain the fight. All right, hard mode active. So what's going to happen is essentially the DPS has to rotate to um, ads as they pop up. Rod has to do constant bashes, otherwise we get chained. If you're chained and you're not seeing the bash, just announce it. If Rod gets chained, we're going to have to do it as well. So the two primary things we're focusing on is rotating the salamander and rotating to the totems. So those things need to be DPS, then you kind of go back on the boss. Bash a lot, kill the, the ad, stack on top. It's just what gets nasty with the constant bashes of the tank um, and then rotating around. So it'll be pretty um, resource intensive rotating around and coming back to the boss. So Let's just give it a go and see how it goes. So we're gonna go ahead and pre-buff, get our buffs up, usually longest to shortest if you can. Whoops, put a Caltrops down here, nope. Reapply it, one, Caltrops, two. Get my uh, Deadly Cloak back up. And see that's the effect here, so I'm gonna have Heli Charge Heavy Attack. Then my one ground effect, two, three, and then Leeching back up. And then usually that will be enough so I don't have to reapply those two ground effects. So I can just apply them once and you see that big circle on the tank. Um, didn't get a heal out fast enough and he died. So that big red circle, the tank's going to have to plug it up essentially. And then we got this and you see that bash going off. There we go. Got it. So one salamander up. You can recover this pretty easily. That, toad, that hole needs to be plugged up or we're going to die. There we go. Good healing. Okay, got it. Now back, regroup. 
Here's the totem in the corner, or the axe, excuse me. Looks like a totem. And you also listen to the audible cues if you can. See the visual effect of him throwing it? You hear the audible cue something about a uh, salamander. So that's going to give you the indication that it's back up. And you see that red and Kratos ring? There it is. I'm going to fully charge heavy here, so I'm out of juice. There we go. Delete it there with that. All right, throw out an orb if you can. I'm low on gas. There we go. Orb back up. Bash up. So that was the bash mechanic there. Same thing. And Deadly Cloak's going to do lower your AoE damage taken. It's very, very useful for this specific fight, too. You can hear the salamander mechanic. You can hear the NPC say that. That subtext, again, will do a really, really good thing for you. So I'm making sure that's up. I'm using a little bit higher food, not the parse food, so I have a little bit more health. Do this. The totem in the corner. So I'm going to preemptively hit an Echoing Vigor there. Um, Echoing Vigor is not going to heal you like Resolving. It's not as fast, but what it will do is off-heal. You'd be shocked at getting that running on a, on a tank, how much it can heal just in a pinch. So throwing that out, yes, it uses a global cooldown. And when I say that, essentially, if you don't know what I'm saying, as is a DPS in this game, essentially what you're thinking about doing is every second, what's the most beneficial global cooldown action I can take per second? So that's what your thought process should be. And when that, what that basically means is, what's the hardest hitting damage thing I can do, the resource sustained thing I can do, the best action I can take. So the reason I don't just use surprise attack over and over is because the things that I'm using like Caltrops or a Deadly Cloak or whatever outperform damage wise uh, my main spamble. So if I let it go the entire duration, it'll out outperform it. So you're, you're constantly thinking about those things and not just sitting there, oh, so-and-so tells me to do this rotation. No, 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 no. You need to know, does this ability outperform the other? See, I'm Tedlar up there, yep. So you would die if you didn't interrupt that fast enough. Okay, got that up. We're at 25%, so you can get gas it down if you have enough. But it's just better to play it safe here. So I'm going to do a dodge in there. And as a stam DPS, you can dodge frequently. That will actually help you survive. Um, it will take a lot of gas and resources, but you don't want to overdo it. The expert evasion passive is really, really juicy. So that's something I really like using. Um, and my champion points because it gives me a free dodge every once in a while because otherwise it'll just take off your too much juice okay now we have this back up i don't know if we can survive this i'm going to get in the hole and try to plug it up but i died and now a bash mechanic so we're probably going to wipe here all right let's give another go here uh totem i'm chained up good bash so i'm going to encap this one here just get a nice little burst window not put all my ground effects down and it'll start ramping up in damage after a while. There we go. Salamander here. So same thing. Heavy attack because I'm low on juice. I'm going to block that. There we go. Deadly cloak up. And we're just a few seconds away here. So let's put our ground effects down on this boss. Light attack in between. Deadly cloak up. And I'm just listening to the audio cues here. Listen to the audio cues. What's going on? Now I should be in execute range. I'm at 15%, so my main spam will should not be surprise attack. It should be whirling blades. And we have enough gas probably where we can just delete it. So as long as we get bashes like that, I'm just going to main spam all this. We're at 300,000 health. That's what I'm looking at. So I think we can get this down. So I'm going to use an orb here. I'm using that synergy, and we got her down. There we go. Nice work. So we wiped once. No big deal. This one's tough. Hey, we got that phase done. So first hard roll boss, usually the hardest, especially for the tank, plugging up those holes and you can wipe and, and so forth, learning it. But we're just clearing trash mobs and kind of what I'm doing during trash mob clears is trying to maintain stacks of whatever I'm using. So I'm using that souls on set. So you'll suck up souls. There'll be a little blue thing. Sometimes if you're standing on top of them, you won't even see them. Um, I'm going to use potions to keep my ultimate up. And really, when you're learning these fights as a DPS, the main thing is to kind of feed up your ultimate and get learn, like, in between fights, how much time it takes to generate the needed ultimate. So, typically, you always want to start the big, huge boss fights off with the juicy, fresh ultimate on your back bar, especially Flawless Dawnbreaker. 20% extra, what, 300 uh, weapon damage is going to be a lot. So, it just takes time and experience learning the boss fights and or the trash pulls of what you can do. 
Another reason to have Camel Hunter slotted on your bar is that Fighter's Guild passive in it, um, Slayer. Make sure I'm saying it right. Fighter's Guild, da -da -da, Guild, Fighters. This here. Um, oh, Banish the Wicked. Gain three ultimate whenever you kill an enemy. So if you get a killing blow, while you're on your front bar, not all mentioning all the other things that Camo Hunter does for you, you're going to gain ultimate. So you're killing out a lot of mobs with all of your AoE from Caltrops, Deadly Cloak, and then Whirling Blades. And you're just going to have tons and tons of ultimate. When you drink an ultimate as a Nightblade, you're going to get tons and tons of ultimate as well. So you should pretty much always be consistently starting off the poles um, with an ultimate and at least saving it for a boss round because it will really add a lot of gas. And for the dungeons using this build and others, you got to realize they only have maybe 18,000 or tw excuse me, 18 million, 20 million health at the very max. And typically meta loadouts, you'll run three DPS and uh, one tank. You won't even run a healer because a lot of times you don't even need one. So with that math in mind, they actually don't take too long um, to do if you have a lot of DPS. So, starting with an ultimate will really help you out, and you can kind of calculate in between. And the game revolves around ultimate, especially as a DPS. So certain phases with the shield or a heavy mechanic is when you're going to want to use your ultimate. I stress this a lot, but um, DPS is all about positioning as well. So using ultimates is one piece, and so is positioning. So your healer here, if they're running combat prayer, which is very wide and very long, but you don't want to be behind them. They want to be behind you. Also, if you're playing with another melee DPS, a lot of the red circles in this game that provide negative effects are typically six to eight meters. So stacking directly on top of each other is not a good idea. But you see how we're kind of in a triangle here? We're kind of in a triangle. Healer behind us, DPS, or kind of like a triangle, and then a tank, a diamond, I should say, a diamond with the uh, tank kind of in the lead. So that way, a lot of the uh, buffs that the healer is going to provide that they have to essentially splash in front of you can hit everybody at once versus one person 28 meters out there picking their nose, another person, you know, right on top of the tank. So if a big red circle lands, you're screwed. So think of a diamond and you're just in that position as a DPS. If people don't know this and you're pugging and running with them, don't get mad at them for knowing. They might not just be paying attention. They might not know how to do that. It's just not something anyone really explains to you until you've just learned this game inside and out. Okay. Okay, hard mode for here is really um, nothing special new. There's just going to be a phase where the boss can't be damaged and it's going to spawn a storm atro. Typically save alts for that phase. Otherwise, chains and alts, there's going to be uh, mobs around the corner, archers. We're just going to try to nuke those down, go back on the boss. Basic, simple stuff. Ads on the corners and dogs are bad. Kill ads, kill boss, rinse and repeat. So I'm going to use a potion, get my buffs up, hit my synergy here. Got a 500 stack, hit that. I didn't pre-buff. Merciless, now we're going to get in uh, our little diamond, like I said. I should should coin that. Okay, Caltrops is down, so I'm going to hit that. And then we're going to kind of rotate around. I kind of explain the mechanics as they come up, but they're not in too intensive. So you see these archers here. Um, you can kill them, ignore them, or do whatever you want, but they will kind of do that cast channel. Um, and that will kind of just target one person. When it does, you do get a lot of time uh, before you actually have to do anything about it. And you see this effect on my screen? Essentially what that means is I take extra damage during this phase. It's not something that you need to panic about, but just be cognizant that you'll take a little bit extra damage. So damage is bad, red is bad. Um, looks like we lost the DPS here, so I'm going to go ahead and grab them. So typically, your healer is usually healing during this phase. So you don't necessarily have to rely on the healer to do it, especially as the tank needs gas. Here's the extra ad I was talking about. So we're going to throw down a trap on them, reapply my buff, and you can see that red effect on them. Right there, it's going to do a, a card cast. So they don't know that. I'm going to go ahead and bash it. And that's what the effect, you can either bash it or kill these mobs quick. I'm going to kill the mob because I want to get that Souls On stack back up. There it is, that blue little shiny. It's going to give me a whole lot of weapon critical and uh, crit damage. These dogs can hit pretty hard on you. So you typically want to pull those in, tunnel them. I'm going to bash this. Fully charged. I'm a little bit low on gas. Use a potion. Maintain my potion cooldowns best I can. And even if you're using trash mobs, you're going to want to use those potions. So they're channeling here. Again, you can see a theme here. A lot of these dungeons are very bash heavy. Bash, bash, bash. So I got my buffs up. And now I can go one or two, three... One, two, three, spammable. 
and we're gonna have to apply our buffs. So Caltrops, Endless Hail. I'm gonna do a dodge roll. So I got that expert evasion. And if you hit that dodge roll on your back bar with your bow, you're gonna get um, Phaedra Expedition. So it's a little bit quick. And if you got that um, expert evasion pass, so you basically get one free one without burning all your stamina. So it's kind of a little trick you can do. Okay, the dogs are up. Another thing you wanna focus on as a DPS, uh, melee or otherwise, is heavy attacks. If you don't know what the heck else to do, just fully charge heavy attack, especially if you're running out of gas like this. Um, fully charge heavy attack. I'm going to use an orb on cooldown. Remember, you got 20 seconds, I think it is, where you can use those synergies. So you see this little effect on me. I'm going to fully charge. You don't have to panic because you got plenty of time before it actually goes off. Uh, so you're like, oh my god, what's on my screen? Why is this thing on me? Well, that's what it is. Okay, here we go. A little bit lower deep uh, health, and then what we're going to get is uh, the, the add phases. Those Atronox are going to come out about two of them at a time. Obviously, don't hit the traps. Let's get back into our diamond. I'm going to throw a Vigor here just to get a little extra healing for our group. Echoing Vigor. So you can see even that's two, three, four thousand heals a second um, on different folks. So it's a really strong off heal you can provide your group. And here comes the add phase. This is where it can be a little bit difficult. So we're going to put our Caltrops down. We're going to put our Trap Beast down. And he's about to get hit with the heavy attack. Might go down here. There we go. So I got them. I'm going to go rotate quick. Bash that. Just delete this guy. Try to imp position in between both. So you can see that positioning is so critical. It's something you got to get used to as a DPS. It's not just, oh my gosh, my rotation, my rotation. No, no, no. Watch how the difference is. So I can hit two people or I can hit one. I'm not going to panic on this phase because I know I got, you know, five or six seconds before it actually does anything. Atronox back up. I'm close to an ulti, so I'm going to save it here. Fully charge this, get this one down. See if I can get that Souls Ons up when that Spirit pops. There we go. Let's reapply everything real quick. We gotta get this thing off the board or we're just killing ads at this point. There we go. Got you down. Shoot my shot. And okay, now we're at 27 and we don't have a whole lot of health on this thing. So it looks like we lost a DPS. About to lose a healer. Okay. Void Charge Heavy Attack. Bash it. Fully charge heavy attack again. We're getting a little overwhelmed with these guys. Bash this. Fully charge heavy attack. And we're just getting overwhelmed with all the adds up. So let's get this. One, two, ground effect. Three. Now here's positioning matters, right? Look, one, two. So I'm clipping four things rather than just a couple. That's why it matters so much where your positioning is and how you know what to do. Same thing with the tank. They need to know, get behind you. Okay, there we go. And positioning and tacking from the flank is super critical. Okay, let's get this down. Reapply my buffs, get you down. Oh, they got this. Usually these uh these things don't come out so much, but let's get them down. Okay, oh, there we go. Break free and another one, jeez. Okay, and then Dawnbreaker here. Deadly Cloak up. Fully charge heavy and then spin. Chop three of them down. Now two. See how that spin is right in between? I keep hammering you on that, but I'm telling you, good DPS know exactly how to position themselves so they can hit the max amount of targets. It sounds like basic common math, and it really is, but um, basic ain't so basic. Okay, so let's do in cap. Only half a million health. I'm just going to ignore tab target. Potion up. Boom. Deleted. That took a while, had some deaths, but we came back from it. And you can come back from that pretty easily. Um, but the positioning is the key point to get out of that. How I position myself and spawn and hit three or four targets rather than just one and focus on that allows the fight to go a lot faster along with being in the diamond formation. So it's like an in and out phase, what happens in this, where um, there'll be a cyclone that's bad on top of the boss. Obviously, you have to get out of it. Then the exact opposite will occur where the only thing you can be inside is where the boss is along with an ad. The tank's supposed to tank taunt the thing right away. If it focuses, you just have to dodge roll or you're going to get nuked. And then we move into the center room around 60% health. Um, it'll do a mechanic where it crushes the wall, goes into the next room. During this phase, you can't really damage it. And then the tank goes to the left. Everyone else goes to the right. Wait for the tank to grab it. We do some damage, there's ads, there's red crap on the ground, your usual suspects. What happens different is the boss will zip on over and you have to drop and just follow me. There'll be a little pop-up like we just did earlier. The spring will pop up. You'll 
go down and you kind of have to aim yourself so you pop up on top of the safe circle spot. It might take a couple of minutes to get a hold of this, but if you can pop up right away, the, the tank should grab the secondary mob. And that's really it. If you get the pop up, you'll drop down in the center stuff. Disregard these salamanders. Don't mess with them. So you'll see it. And I can spend, spend 10 minutes explaining this, but y'all going to forget it as soon as we get in here. So let's just give it a go and see how it goes and uh, kind of walk you through as we go. Okay, same thing here. The grab. I'm going to do my ulti. And it only has 9 million health, so it's not that long of a fight, really. Let's get in our diamond formation. You'll see that, so obviously that's bad. It's not a one-shot necessarily, but I dodge and block it a little bit. So actively block. So that's the get-out phase. Yeah, that's the get-out phase. So we're just going to pull back here. Blast about three seconds, and then we're going to go back in and nuke it. There we go. Yep. Okay, we're good. Now we'll have the suck in phase, which this now, same thing, get inside, get inside quick. So we'll watch the boss. Yeah, now AoE cleave both the boss and that I add if we can. Try to get him down at the same time if you can. Again, here's positioning. So I'm going to do one attack, and then I'm going to start spinning it so I get them both triggered down. There we go. Okay. Get my soul's ons back up. Out. Now 60% should trigger it to the next phase where it'll uh, destroy the wall. So just kind of get rid of the ads as we can. Okay, it's down. Now, so you can just heavy attack it. It's not going to do anything. You can see it's invulnerable. So this is where Rod's going to go left. Uh, us together are going to go right. So heal yourself. Okay, DPS go right. Rod goes left. Go ahead and taunt straight away when you can, Rod. Okay, it's taunted. Here we go. Watch the flame totems. They will shoot out lava out of that. So same thing. We're going to have inners and outers and that those totems will shoot. So if you park yourself right by it, you're going to get deleted. Come inside now. Just, yeah, get a little bit behind it. But just watch. Be careful of that. It's like Fangler. Uh, it's yeah. like something. Uh, okay, now drop down with me. Heal up. Now watch how I point myself. I point myself right towards the boss. Rod, jump up first. Yep. Okay, grab the add and then the AOE cleave, kind of like we did earlier. And that's it. So we're going to AOE cleave. When I say that, I'm just trying to hit as many attacks as I can on all multiple mobs. I'm uh, blocking there. I missed it. And so I'm clipping yeah. both of them. There we go. Now watch that flame. Yeah, watch that flame totem come back. Okay, I'm going to just reapply my buffs during this inactive phase. Okay, good. He's positioning the boss away. Try it towards him away from us. There we go. Good. So we're at 47%, so we'll have one more drop probably. So during this, I'm just going to hold a heavy... Oh, big flame thing. Bad. Okay, there we go. Getting in, trying to get behind it. Always face behind to the flank if you can. Um, obviously, you're going to do more damage. We're going to drop here. This should be the last one. A little bit of off healing if you can. Let tank jump up first if possible. And then let's go. All right, big AOE DPS if you got it. Warhorn something. Okay, deadly cloak. There we go. Cleave it down. So, boom. And then caltrops and endless hail are going to be my best friend during this just because it'll just do damage to both of them we're at 30 percent, so i'm looking for that health bar to be at 25 now i back out so the flames you see that in between be careful of that so i'm going to pull back just to be 100 percent careful fully charged i'm not doing anything else of use i might as well get some resources back deadly cloak or keep my buffs up taking a lot of pressure here let's do a flawless boom big off heal if i can and just clip it clip it and rip it so now we're going to execute. No reason to do surprise attack now when we're this low. Because I can 50,000 or so executes. Bang, 50,000. Come on, Whirling Blades. Ah, we didn't do it fast enough. Okay, let's go up. Oh, big heals. Okay, I'm just going to go in for it straight away. And block and do a dodge and a DB ski and a cleave ski. Come on, big warhorn. Yeah, there we go. Snuffed out. 
Kinra's omelets, tr uh, truths, oh gosh, and Kratos behemoth, uh, reinforced medium, not bad. So this damn night play, I guess. Hopefully you learned something this video, but what I want you to take away is it's not just about the buffs and debuffs. It's about maintaining your rota rotation, pre-buffing, um, where are you positioning is super key. Um, prioritizing the mobs, doing AOE cleave, trying to hit more mobs at the same time. You can have all the best rotations and gear and everything, but if you don't know these advanced strategies, when you get in here, this is not a parse dummy. This is fighting. And you got to actually be able to put those things together and react instinctively when you take pressure. Because in dungeons, the harder you get, the more it's going to be difficult. And you're going to have to react. You're going to be on the fly. You're going to be with other pugs that don't know what they're doing. And you're going to have to carry sometimes. And this class can definitely do that. It can off-heal a little bit. AoE, great single target, high mobility. And it's just one of the fun way, funnest ways to play. So thanks for watching. Hope you learned something um, from this. And thanks to the team.